Okay, we want to work a few more problems with the chain rule. Just to review, the chain rule says that if y is a function of u and u is a function of x, then we can differentiate y with respect to x by going through u and writing dy du times du dx. So first we differentiate y with respect to u, then we differentiate u with respect to x. But in actual, pro uh, in, in actual practice, it's a little easier than that. So, for instance, if we have y is equal e to the u, okay, e to the u, where u itself is a function of x, then the derivative of y with respect to x is just the derivative of this with respect to u, which is e to the u, times the derivative of u with respect to x. So, for instance, if f of x is equal to e raised to the cosine x power, so here's e to the u, where u itself is a function of x, then the derivative f prime of x meaning the derivative of f with respect to x is, okay, I differentiate e to the cosine x, I get e to the cosine x. Then I differentiate cosine x, and I get negative sine x. So I end up with negative sine x times e to the cosine x. So e to the u, its derivative is going to be e to the u times du dx. So e to the cosine x, when I differentiate, I get that derivative, which is e to the cosine x. Then I have to differentiate this cosine to give me negative sine. Let's look at another problem. If I have a trig function, f of x equals, say, tangent u, where u itself is a function of x, then the derivative of f with respect to x is going to be the derivative of tangent u with respect to u, which is just going to be secant squared u. Then I differentiate the, d, the u with respect to x. For instance, if f of x is tangent of sine x, then f prime of x is going to be the derivative of tangent, which is secant squared, of sine x. Then I differentiate sine x and get cosine x. So this is cosine x times secant squared of sine x. So here's cosine of x, here's secant squared of sine x. So I differentiate tangent of the sine, the derivative of tangent is secant squared still of the sine, then I differentiate the sine according to the chain rule to get cosine. Here's another problem. If f of x is log of u, and u is a function of x, then the derivative of f with respect to x is just the derivative of log, which is 1 over u, times the derivative of u with respect to x. So, for instance, if we have f of t is the log of the sine of t, when I differentiate this, I get 1 over sine t. Then I have to differentiate sine and get cosine t. So what's this? Cosine divided by sine, so maybe cotangent if I want t. Or maybe you don't use that trig identity either way. But the idea is this. You have tangent of u. Here we have the log of u. Before we had e to the u. This is the argument of that function. So first you differentiate the function, keep the argument the same, then you differentiate the argument. So the derivative of tangent is secant squared. I don't do anything to that. I keep it the same. Then I differentiate it to get that du dx. Same thing here, log u. The argument is u. So when I differentiate here, I get 1 over u, then I differentiate u. All right, let's look at a couple more problems. Okay, I'm just going to walk by here. I uh, want to look at the chain rule in a little more detail. Suppose y is a function of u, u is a function of v, and v is a function of x. What's the derivative of y with respect to x? Well, by the chain rule, it says dy dx is derivative of y with respect to u times du dv times dv dx. So it kind of looks like fractions where all these things sort of in the middle divide out. What you do is just chain together all these derivatives. You just keep differentiating until you can't differentiate anymore. So let's try an example here. g of x is e to the 1 plus 3x all squared. I'll try to write this way and see what happens. So g prime of x. Okay, the derivative of e to this power is just e to that power. So e to the 1 plus 3x quantity squared times, now I have to differentiate the 1 plus 3x to the second. Well, that's going to be the exponent 2 times the base. We don't change it. Power 1 less. And then I differentiate the base to get 
just 3. So if I simplify this a little bit, let's see, what do I have? 6 times 1 plus 3x times e to the 1 plus 3x quantity squared. So there's my chain rule, e to this power. When I differentiate e to this power, I get that exact same thing. Then I differentiate the exponent, and then I differentiate the base on that exponent. Let's try another one. Suppose f of t is natural log e to the 2t. Then f prime of t, meaning the derivative of f with respect to t, is the derivative of log of this, which is 1 over all that, e to the 2t, times the derivative of e to the 2t, which is e to the 2t, times the derivative of 2t, which is just 2. Now, look what happens here. e to the 2t, e to the 2t, they divide out. This just becomes 2. But isn't that right? Aren't, isn't the, uh, the logarithmic function and the exponential function, those two natural functions, they're inverses of each other. So natural log of e to the 2t really is just 2t. So when I differentiate 2t with respect to t, I just get 2. So that just kind of confirms that we're doing the chain rule correctly. Okay, how about one more problem over here? z is tangent of e to the negative 3 theta. Let's differentiate that with respect to theta. So dz d theta will be derivative of tangent, which is secant squared, of that same argument, e to the negative 3 theta, times the derivative of e to the negative 3 theta, which is just e to the negative 3 theta, times the derivative of negative 3 theta, which is negative 3. So what do I have here? Negative 3 e to the negative 3 theta times secant squared e to the negative 3 theta. So chain rule, I just differentiate until I can't differentiate anymore. Down here I would say, well, the derivative of three, negative 3 theta is negative 3 times d theta d theta. Well, that's just going to be the number 1, so I can't differentiate anymore after that. So the chain rule, what it does is it allows us to differentiate some pretty complicated functions right here without having to make up a bunch of new rules. We only have a few rules. We know how to differentiate a few functions. So when we get combinations of them together, we can use this chain rule to get those derivatives.